Now in this video we'll just continue discussing colorbond, colorbond roof replacements. And the critical theme that we'll be looking at in this video is called transitions. Now transitions are very important things that we go through in our lives. We transition from night to day and we transition from childhood to adulthood. It's, and how we transition is the very important part. Because if we don't transition properly, a lot of things can go wrong. So let's have a look at transitions. Uh, an obvious transition on a roof is where the roof planes change. And usually there is something like a valley in between. You're transitioning from one uh, plane to another plane and the transition is treated by a valley. And every time we come to a valley, the roof installation process really slows down. Now before we go into the discussion about how you actually lay a color bond roof into a valley, the first thing we have to consider is the old valley. Now some people will say if the old valley is quite good then we should keep the old valley. Well that's one option but I think the better option is that the old valley is going to have a shorter life than the new roof. So if you're going to replace the roof, you might as well take the old valley away and put in a brand new valley, which is usually going to be a color bond valley and it will last as long as the roof. Now, when roofers come to a valley, there's always the discussion about how you should cut the sheets at the valley. No, because he's going to cut it perfect. Now the end result that everyone wants and looks at is when the sheets are finally cut into the valley, the sheets are in a nice straight parallel line all the way up the valley. Now how do you actually achieve that when you lay the roof? Now when I first started cutting sheets into valleys, I used to think that I'd have to work out everything perfectly and get every sheet cut to the correct line so that when you lay the roof sheets going up the valley, the finished look is a nice straight line. And I always failed. Nowadays, I always advise two steps. When you come to a valley, we would estimate where the valley should be cut. We shall overcut a little bit so that the overhang into a valley is more than eventually it's going to be. And once both sides of the valley are laid, we would then strike a string line on both sides and then cut the valley on both sides to get the nice straight line. That's the easier way, I think, of cutting in a valley. Now, once we've done the valley transition, very often the roof will eventually end up at a wall. And this is one transition that has many options because usually when the wall is originally constructed, it's got flashings embedded into the wall. They're usually step flashings and they're done in lead. And now that you've taken the tiles off, the step flashings are still there. Now, the question is, how do you transition a new metal roof up onto this wall that's got the step flashings? One option is to retain the step flashings if they are still in good condition and slip the new color bond apron under the flashing over the lead wall flashing. Now, this is when things get a bit contentious because there is the rule that you shouldn't have lead up against color bond metal because it promotes rust. Now, in my experience, if you transition the wall intersection in this manner, you slide the apron under the lead wall flashings. Because there's usually an air gap and there's not a lot of moisture between the back of the lead and the apron flashing, the color bond apron flashing, I've hardly seen any corrosion problems between the two. And I can safely say that you can actually do that without coming across corrosion problems between the lead and the color bond. So the, this option is quite valid. But the drawback would be the original lead flashings that are embedded into the wall because if they are not functioning properly, then you end up with a leaky wall transition, a leaky wall intersection that will continue to leak even after the new roof. And there's always cosmetics to be taken into consideration because with a new color bond roof, you have old lead flashings, 
you've got new, you've got old, and sometimes it's not a very good look. So the other option is a lot of people would go and butt the apron flashing against the wall and put in a new wall flashing over the two. And this combination makes for a much better finish, a much better look, because you don't see the lead flashings anymore. You see a colorbond wall flashing and a colorbond apron flashing and everything looks nice and neat. Now the question is, how is this wall flashing installed into the wall? Because if the wall is either brick or it is rendered, then we are really relying on sealant on the new wall apron flashing against the wall to perform perfectly over time. Because if the sealant breaks and water gets in between, then you get water trickling down the wall. And the better option is actually to chase this wall flashing into the wall, cut a groove in the wall and then chase this flashing in so that if there's a failure in the render, the water doesn't actually go behind the wall flashing, it'll go over the wall flashing and you don't get any seepage leaks along the wall. So when the new roof hits a wall, there are many options to be considered. Now the next thing to be considered would be penetrations. And there's a couple of instances, you've got skylights, and if you've got an existing skylight on a tile roof, you have to consider what to do with that skylight on the new color bond roof. And very often the skylight that suits the tile roof is not suitable for the metal roof. So as a result, a lot of skylights just need to be taken out and replaced by a new skylight that's more appropriate to the new color bond roof. So that's skylights. The next penetration we got to look at is a chimney. And two things, a chimney is like a mini wall. So there's always stepped flashings around the perimeter of the chimney. And as per the wall, you gotta decide how to actually flash this, to retain the lead or to put a new wall flashing in. The other thing that is different to a wall is that the chimney will need a soaker flashing. And the soaker flashing will let water that runs down in front of the chimney to go around the chimney and along the sides and then out to the gutter. Now soaker flashings can work quite well when the roof is quite steep, but as the roof pitch gets lower, the soaker flashings can actually lead to leaks. So in these instances, we're better off putting a tray flashing around the chimney, eliminate the soaker altogether so that there's no soaker flashing and put a tray flashing around the chimney. The water runs down the tray, around the side of the chimney, still on the tray, and then goes to the gutter. So usually a tray flashing is a better alternative to the traditional soaker flashing that's used around chimneys. Now the last transition we're gonna look at in this video would be something that's really just applicable for the inner city roofs that are replaced by color bond roofs. And this is where the house is actually a semi, which is, it's a shared house. So there are two houses together, what we call semis, and there's a common roof between the two. Now, the two houses are usually owned by separate owners. So if one owner decides to replace their old tile roof with a color bond roof, and the other neighbor doesn't want to, then you end up with a new color bond roof and an old tile roof. So what happens when you transition between the two? Now, there are really two considerations here. One is the aesthetics, which are the cosmetics. What will it look like when the, the new roof is finished and it's transitioned to the old roof? You know, sometimes you would put in a tile ridge cap between the two. So when you look at the two properties, you've got color bond roof, tile roof, and you've got a tile capping that goes between the two. The other option is to have a custom flashing, a custom transition flashing between the new color bond roof that slips in either over or under the tile roof. And here the main consideration is how that combination is waterproof. Now there are obviously other options. Um, you could do the cheap and nasty way of putting a flexible flashing between the two. Doesn't look quite as good, but this is something that will work in the temporary situation, but not in the permanent situation. 
And if we were to use this, this would be assuming that the neighbor in the short term would be looking at also changing their roof over. In this case, the temporary flexible flashing would suffice for the time being. So now that just about covers the major points of changing an old tile roof to a color bond roof. Now, this is not meant to be the be all and end all about replacing a tile roof with a color bond roof. There's a lot more deeper questions that may be asked and would need answers. But in broad scope, this is probably enough to get you to understand what is involved when you're thinking of replacing your old tile roof with a new color bond roof.